Hi, my name is Dr. Mike Ferranti and welcome to the Virtual Medical School. Today what we're going to discuss is Neurontin and Lyrica. Before we can really discuss uh, either of these, it's important to know the different kinds of pain. Uh, and pain is divided into two types, okay? Number one, somatic. Uh, somatic uh, means that it comes from the uh, joints, the skin, uh, the uh, muscles. There's, uh, the second type is neuropathic. Uh, people will also include visceral and somatic pain in a type of pain that is, uh, that is described as nociceptive. Nociceptive pain is different from uh, neuropathic pain. Nociceptive uh, pain has neurotransmitters, chemicals that we have, uh, you know, that are actually fully formed by approximately 20 weeks of gestation uh, in the womb. Uh, there are uh, you know, neural pathways which uh, mediate, there are structures, receptors which mediate uh, this type of pain. Uh, neuropathic pain does not have this type of defined uh, pathways. Uh, what uh, neuropathic pain means is that there is damage to the nervous system. In other words, it cannot occur de novo, arising from the new in the Latin. Uh, you have to have some type of an injury to the nervous system in order to have neuropathic pain. Now, Neurontin is a major step forward in the treatment of neuropathic pain. Why? Because in previous times, the neuropathic pain medications caused many, many side effects. So Neurontin may not help you, but it probably will not hurt you. That is the reason there is a, it's such a dramatic step forward. Lyrica, um, while uh, you know studies seem to show that it, that it doesn't have any worse side effect profile. It's about f five to seven times more potent than Neurontin. And because of that, I personally feel that it does have an increased side effect profile. Um, the, if you're interested in you know, what types of neuropathic pain you can use to treat Neurontin and to, uh, to treat with Neurontin or to treat with Lyrica, you know, things such as post-trapetic neuralgia, things such as diabetic polyneuropathy, in essence, any kind of neuropathic pain. Now, also, uh, for those of you out there who have fibromyalgia, uh, Lyrica has been studied with respect to the treatment of patients who have fibromyalgia. We won't get into fibromyalgia, it's a very complicated, uh, you know, sign symptom complex. But in Neurontin, at least, it appears to have some clinical data that suggests that it has uh, effect against uh, the disease fibromyalgia. But uh, certainly Lyrica uh, does have uh, clinical studies uh, and randomized clinical trials which do show efficacy versus fibromyalgia. Now, how do these drugs work? Uh, in essence, I'm supposed to tell you that uh, they work on the, you know, uh, alpha-2 delta subunit of the voltage gated calcium channel, which doesn't mean a whole lot to you. And that's okay. The real th question is, is, you know, this is a hypothesis. We really don't know how they work. What the best way to conceptualize this is to suggest that what they do is they shut down uh, ectopic or, you know, which means abnormal or aberrant firing of neurons. So if you have an injury in one level, the way to conceptualize the next higher order neuron in whatever pathway begins to fire. Uh, and this can go all the way from injury in the peripheral nerve to uh, basically uh, spinal cord neurons firing to brain neurons firing. Neuron can also be used for sleep. Uh, and it is used to treat certain sleep abnormalities and its action is really independent of uh, its uh, neuropathic effect. Now, let's talk about pharmacokinetics because that is important. Pharmacokinetics uh, means the relationship between a dose and the blood level attained. It has nothing to do with clinical effect. It just really is a relationship between how much you take in and then what your attendant blood level is. It's important to note that, um, that for Neurontin, there are nonlinear pharmacokinetics, unlike Lyrica. 
For Neurontin, there is an uptake system in the gut that can or can't become saturated. So the dosing of neuron is kind of funny and unusual if you've taken it. In other words, you start out at a low dose, you get up to about 900. If you're lucky, you see a clinical effect. But at 1,800 milligrams a day, you most of the time see a clinical effect. That's when that, that uh, uptake system in the gut is beginning to become saturated. You're getting enough of the drug in. Now, how do you dose over 1,800? The dosing over 1800 is very simple. You increase the dose uh, to an arbitrary number, and uh, obviously not a, an increased, arbi a high arbitrary number, but you increase it to an arbitrary number. And then what happens is uh, you ask the patient, uh, do you have an increased effect? If they do, you leave them on the higher dose. If you don't, uh, then you drop them down to the lower dose. This is very different from Lyrica, wherein if you increase the dose of the Lyrica, you get an increased effect. And you can see it at least within 48 to 72 hours in certain people. The only other thing I really want to tell you about the pharmacokinetics of um, both Lyrica and Neuron is they are renally excreted. And therefore, you have to be very careful in um, people who have uh, renal insufficiency. The dosage of, uh, of Neurontin is best at a uh, every three times a day, which is referred to as TID in Latin. The, in Lyrica, it's a twice a day or a three times a day drug. What I want to impress upon you, though, is you do not acutely or precipitously stop either of these medications. Neurontin has been associated at least anecdotally, with the onset of seizures, even though you don't have epilepsy, you you can get the uh, you can get a seizure if you stop the drug slowly. So if your doctor's got you on and you want to come off for a certain reason because you think it's not working, what you do is you go back to the doctor and have the doctor wean, which means take you off slowly. Adverse reactions. Uh, the the importance of neurotin, as I said before, is that. It really is a drug that may not help you, but it won't hurt you. So the, the most common side effect of Neuron is sedation uh, and or dizziness. And it's obviously more common in people who are elderly. Uh, younger people tolerate it very much better. The other side effect is peripheral edema, which occurs both, uh, in, which is basically water around your ankles, which occurs with both Lyrica as well as with Neurontin. Um, if you think know about scheduling, it's it's uh, sort of what the federal government does for controlled substances. Neuron is not a scheduled a scheduled uh, drug. Uh, Lyrica is, and because Lyrica is uh, what's known as a Schedule Five, which is the lowest abuse potential of any of the scheduling. Uh, it needs to be written on a special script. The reason that this was done is because certain individuals can uh, get a certain degree of euphoria. Uh, from Lyrica. Uh, so I, I hope that this has uh, been educational with respect to um, understanding a little bit of the pharmacology of Neurontin as well as, uh, as, well as uh, Lyrica. Once again, uh, this is purely for educational purposes. Uh, if you're going to, uh, if you're going to uh, use these medications, you have to use them with and under the direction of a physician. Uh, please ask those physicians uh, for clinical information. This is merely for educational purposes. Thank you, and uh, good night from uh, the virtual medical school.